Age is just a number. If you're 60, I assume you feel 50. If you're 50, I assume you feel 40 and so on. But when it comes to dating and specifically online dating, age isn't just a number. It's a real thing you have to contend with, an obstacle that needs to be overcome. So what do you do when the dating pool gets smaller and arguably worse on the far side of 50? Stick around and I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. I'm Evan Mark Katz, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women and your personal trainer for love. Welcome to the Love You podcast. Keep listening to discover how to overcome the challenges you face as a woman over 50. I've been doing this since I'm 31 years old. I am 48 years old right now. My wife is 51 right now for, uh, and she will be in a few weeks. Don't tell her that I aged her. So um, I went on to my Love You Facebook group with all the paid members of the course and I asked them just a quickie question. What are the biggest challenges you're facing as a woman over the age of 50? They quickly, like seconds later, came back with a list. I'm just going to try to tackle this list as if I was on a coaching call and run through it and give you some of my thoughts and hopefully it'll make a difference to you if you're a woman uh, who is dealing with the effects of the dating pool changing over time as you become middle-aged. So uh, the first issue and it came up with a couple of women is uh, ageism. Uh, men who are 50 plus wanting to date women, women younger than 50. I can see why this is really frustrating because it is different than real life. In real life, you meet a man, a man meets you, he doesn't know what age you are, he's not searching, he just finds you attractive, you have a conversation, you exchange phone numbers, and the age question kind of goes out the window when there's a, a mutual attraction. These days, certainly with the pandemic and whatnot, um, meeting strangers in real life, uh, smiling at someone with your eyes uh, <laughs> over your mask, isn't an optimal way to do it. So dating online is, if not the only game in town, certainly the most important game in town. And I did another video recently that talked about the importance of not being stuck on age and how you're gonna do better if you broaden your age range and go maybe five years older than you thought you were gonna go if you had a narrow age range. If I were coaching men, I'd tell them to do the exact same thing. And I say this as a guy who is an avowed hypocrite. I'm teaching you what I didn't do when I was a single guy. When I was a single guy, I was wanted to have kids. I was looking for women who were 27 to 34. The woman I married was a month away from tur turning 38. We were two ships passing in the night on a dating site. So when I tell you to open up, far easier said than done. But if I'm coaching guys or if any guys are listening to this, you are passing up your soulmate guys by not giving a chance to women your age and potentially older. Really the only place where age actually matters, really actually matters, is women of childbearing age. Women, you know, 35 to 45 or, or something who want kids. Men who want to fall in love, get married, have two kids, etc., do have a right to be discriminating uh, when it comes to uh, that if they have a vision. So uh, everybody else, I think, really needs to kind of let it go a little bit when, when biological children aren't involved. And that goes for you. That's the main thing that you can control is you can't control what men do. Right? You can go on to Match.com and use a function they have called Reverse Match, where it shows you only the men who are open to dating you. Right? But you can't force a guy who in his head thinks he's most attracted to and therefore deserves a woman 25 to 35. If a guy's trying to date his daughter, let him knock himself out. He's not getting anywhere. Those women are also my clients, these 33-year-old women, and they're sick of who's the guy who looks like grandpa who's writing to me. Ew, make these guys stop. So believe me, right? you can't do anything about what the opposite sex does. What you can do is actually try to broaden your filter and go for the top 5%, right? the guys who are cute, lively, active, self-aware, keep themselves in great shape. Essentially, assuming that you're an exception to the age rule, there has to be a man who's the exception to the age rule too, and that man's going to value you even more. Right? There's no point in 
shaming men. You're allowed, by the way, you're allowed to write to a guy whose age range, you know, Match.com hides it these days, but a guy whose age range is younger than you, you're allowed to write to him. It's just recognize and detach yourself from the fact that it's a long shot, the same as it is a long shot if a guy who's older than your max age range writes to you. So we spend so much time getting upset at what other people are doing, and there's nothing empowering about that. Right? I want you to be empowered. I want you to take control of what you can do instead of getting upset at what you can't do. Uh, next question was about sex after menopause. I have uh, never had menopause. I just, I, I know you'd think, but I can't speak authoritatively about menopause. I think my wife's going through perimenopause right now. Not something we spend a lot of time talking about. Um, maybe because it's not too bad for her, or maybe because she's not a complainer. So I'm not going to be um, you know, a fountain of information for sex after menopause. I understand it is more challenging. Uh, it gets a little drier. Lubrication is usually a good uh, solution for that. Um, I think the bigger issue is not just menopause and differing sex drives. Men's sex drive often goes down when sex drive is even higher sometimes. The real issue is men of a certain age and erectile dysfunction, which wasn't a question that I got here. And that's relatively common. And um, I mean, that's probably its own, its own podcast, Men in Erectile Dysfunction. Um, these are challenges that you know, women in their 30s don't necessarily have to, to face. And as always, we have to ask ourselves, what's the workaround? I mean, let's, let's, let's approach this from that logical place. What's the workaround? Um, there's a guy who's got prostate cancer, can't even get it up anymore. Is that a deal breaker? Right? Are there other ways to please you? Are there other ways you could be satisfied if you're getting your other needs met? So again, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent, but there are certainly different challenges for women in their 50s and 60s who are dealing with sex than men than, than there were before. And that, I feel like... <laughs> That's the kind of thing that we discuss in depth during a Love You Coaching call. It's not necessarily something I could do in a 15-minute podcast. So uh, I want to apologize. I didn't even really look at these before I, I started taking them on. Um, the next question is about body image. Not feeling as good about your body uh, as you get older. I can understand that from a personal level. I, I don't look like I used to. Um, uh, my wife uh, would be the first to tell you that she didn't look, you know, doesn't look the same at age uh, 51 after two kids as she did when we met when we were 38. And um, I called her the freak uh, because that's how good her body was. The issue is really with one's own security, right? I, I often say in, in, in coaching, it's not whether you have issues or whether you have baggage or whether you have insecurities, because we all have them. It's your relationship to those insecurities. Are you going to let the insecurities own you or are you going to just relegate it to what it is? It's just a, a piece of who you are. You don't like your legs. You don't like your wrinkles. You don't like your jowls, whatever it is. So I've never, ever, ever advocated anybody having uh, plastic surgery. I'm not against it. I'm not for it. That is a very personal choice that it once again goes outside the realm of my expertise. But I can tell you that if you're confident, it more than makes up for the fact that you might be 15, 20 pounds overweight. Really, it does. It does with men, it does with women. We much prefer curvy women who are comfortable and happy and, and sexual and bold in their own skin than women who look great but are quivering masses of insecurity because they're comparing themselves to women who are 15, 20 years younger. There are men who are still trying to date women who are much, much younger than them. You can't compete against that. There's nothing to worry about that. It's, it's sort of a useless comparison. So it's comparing yourselves apples to apples with women your own age. If you're a 53-year-old woman and you're single, why would he choose you over another 53-year-old woman if a man wants a 53-year-old woman? And we're really paying attention to what he's actually shopping for instead of comparing yourself to what he's shopping against. Um, that's, that's important when it comes to your, your mindset, personal level, nothing to do with uh, body image per se, but it's a thing that I've said about myself before. I've never walked into a room and felt like I was the best looking guy in the room ever my entire life. Um, uh, my self-esteem doesn't derive from that. My self-esteem derives from other things. I think I'm, uh, 
I think I'm creative. I think I'm intelligent. Uh, I think uh, I have a way with words. I think I'm hardworking. I think I'm ethical. I think I'm funny. Um, so there's a lot of things I think I am. <laughs> But being the best looking guy has never been one of them. So I compensate with these, these other things. And if a woman finds me attractive enough, I don't have to be the most attractive guy. Right? And I know women often value themselves. Once it becomes a, it's inextricable from society, the women often value themselves for how they look. Right? But most guys realize at a certain point that looks only get you so far when they've married someone who is really attractive and took a lot of work. So don't keep on beating yourself up because your looks aren't what they used to be. You're a better person than you've ever been before. You should be more self-aware and confident right? and know what you're bringing to the table and know how to manage a relationship than you've ever been before. That's what you really have to deliver. You're not competing against 20 or younger versions of you. Next question um, is on how to handle online dating if you've never done it before. Um, also, I, I, I've been doing online dating, uh, coaching it for 17 years, um, dating online since 1997. Um, I was an early adopter. And so I've witnessed the various changes and how things have gone. And um, it's faster moving. It's scarier, perhaps, than it ever has been before. It's also never been shallow. Um, therefore, easier, technically, to get set up online by posting a photo and swiping right. The problem is there's not a real skill involved in it. So 2008, I created a course called Finding the One Online. I'm really, really proud of it. The content holds up, even though it doesn't talk about uh, dating apps. Uh, now dating apps are a thing. And so my recommendation, and again, without sounding too, too, is this is exactly what we do in uh, Love You. The entire second month is on meeting men. Week seven is about online dating. I've taken my, my big Finding the One Online course, which is seven hours long, and I condensed it into about 90 minutes of video content that walks you through every step of Love You, so every step of online dating. So if you're intimidated by the various apps, don't know which site to choose, don't know how to write a profile, don't know how to flirt with guys, how to respond to guys, how to initiate contact with guys, how to screen guys, that is exactly what we do here. So you don't have to be an expert in everything Right? But if you want to have a leg up on the other women, the competition, that's why people join me. Love you is to not only learn this, but also refine that technique through coaching. So don't be afraid of online dating. It is your friend. It would be like being afraid of vegetables. <laughs> if you want to lose weight, you, you have to be able to embrace it. You can't hide from it. But there's a way we can make the vegetables more tasty and palatable. Um, Next issue for women over 50, men who are not ready for commitment, even though they said they are. How do you figure that out? That goes back to a lot of things that you've heard me say in other Love You podcasts and videos. I don't know that there's a, a huge difference between men who are over 50 and men who are younger 50. I don't know about that's the, the arbitrary guideline. I would say this. Um, usually men over 50 are getting over a long-term marriage and uh, a divorce. And women are the ones who are initiating more divorces and are more burnt out on marriage. And what that means is that you're, 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 you're not really burnt out on marriage. You're burnt on, on marriage to that one guy and you associate marriage with all that negative stuff. The truth is the best guys really do want to be remarried. So if I'm saying, hey, how do you suss out the guys who don't really want commitment? I would first... Not interrogate, just pay attention to you, to pay attention as you date to whether he's the kind of guy who speaks highly of the institution of marriage. Is he a guy who believes in commitment, wants to build a future, wants to grow old with someone and integrate families and have holidays together? Or is he the guy who's just looking to have someone who he sees once a week for sex and who checks in on him and they keep their separate spaces indefinitely and his freedom is more important? And so it's paying attention to not just his words, but his actions. There are guys who are really eager to get remarried. Sometimes they're too eager and they scare you off. Even so, those guys are often a better bet than the guys who are um, who say, I don't know what I'm looking for. Uh, I don't know if I ever want to get married again. Um, and they, they, they essentially keep you at a distance. So if you're feeling like you're at a distance and your relationship is not escalating, 
it's probably a decent sign that he's ambivalent. He likes you. He doesn't want everything and all the responsibility that comes with that. So really pay attention not to just how you feel with the guy. Pay attention to how you feel in between dates. What kind of effort does he make to see you, talk about a future? And again, I've done a bunch of videos on this, so make sure you look back at a couple of them because I don't think it's that different when you're assessing whether a guy wants commitment or not. And then there's the question of choices, right? The quality of men in the dating pool over 50. Uh, this is also a real concern. Uh, week, month four of Love You, we talk about attachment styles. We talk about uh, secure, anxious, and avoidant attachment styles and um, how basically the older you get, the secure people, the ones who are capable of having intimate relationships are more likely to get married and stay married, which leaves a disproportionate number of anxious and avoidant men and women in the dating marketplace. So indeed, the dating marketplace, the quality of men does degrade over time. But let's keep in mind that that's not permanent and it doesn't speak for all men. That's important. We get into this black and white either or thinking. It doesn't matter if in general there are more avoidant men in the dating marketplace. It doesn't matter in general if X, Y, and Z, because this isn't a game of musical chairs. We need one guy. One guy who married the wrong woman when he was 25, stayed with her until the kids uh, graduated college, and then became single. But he's a great guy, husband, marriage, family oriented, knows how to treat a woman ethical, he just didn't get on the single market until now after 25, 30 years, right? Or a guy who was suddenly wid widowed because his wife got breast cancer at age 51, but he really loves being married. Right? We're paying attention to those guys. There's good guys out there, right? But it's not as abundant as dating was in your 20s or even in your early 30s. The, 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 you're not going to find a guy who doesn't have some measure of baggage the same way that pretty much anybody who's watching me is going to have some measure of relationship baggage. Nobody comes in as a, as a blank slate with never having had their heart broken or never having fallen in love or I mean, everybody's got their stuff. So once again, we don't need a million guys in your area. We don't need to look at the men on your on your feed and, and think that most of them are husband candidates. They're not, which makes it no different than real life. You step onto a, a bus or go into a mall, just go out to the park. What percentage of men would you throw a dart at and think, that guy's my husband? It's still a low percentage. So we're not playing higher percentages. We're widening our funnel we're looking for more opportunity. We're looking in the hidden corners for people perhaps that other women would overlook. Maybe men who are under five foot ten. Maybe men who make a little bit less money than you. Maybe men who are a couple years older than your previous max age range. And we're paying attention to how their courtship process feels. Is he following up? Is he serious about you? Is he excited about you? Is he making an effort? Is this relationship escalating? Does this feel easy? And that is universal love you stuff, regardless of how old you are, where you live, what you look like. Good advice is just good advice. And I'll remind you, these are all things we talk about in Love You. And you were surrounded by other smart, strong, successful women who are dealing with the exact same things. Like Love You has two major cohorts, uh, 35 to 43, 33 to 43 women who want to have their own biological kids or have a sense of urgency about getting married and women who are on the other side of that, maybe, you know, mid forties to mid sixties who are divorced and are learning how to date more effectively in, a, in the 21st century. So when you join Love You, if I select you, you'll be part of our Facebook community, and you can talk to me daily inside that community if you have questions, and you can be part of those weekly coaching calls where you're going to be able to connect with other women who get it, not your friend who uh, has been miserably married for 20 years, not your friend who consistently dates the wrong men, not the friend who's miserable and doesn't want you to fall in love because it means you're going to leave her. You're going to be with women who are on the same path in the same position on this journey to confidence and abundance and commitment. All of this can be yours, even if you're a woman in your 50s. Check out my site, see the proof, and I look forward to seeing you and love you. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Thank you for tuning into the Love You Podcast. For more episodes like this on YouTube, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. 
choose all to ensure you get notified whenever new content comes out. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please share an honest review on Apple. It would mean the world to me. More reviews equals more awareness of the Love You podcast and more love in the world. And if you want to find love right now and are committed to making healthier relationship choices so you can have an easy marriage that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood, look for the link below and apply for coaching in Love You. Thank you, and I'll talk to you soon.